Hey guys, what's up today? We're going to look at solving a system of differential equations, but this system is going to have complex eigenvalues. So whenever we have complex eigenvalues, they're going to be lambda of the form alpha plus or minus i times beta. All right, so those are going to be our eigenvalues, and v is going to be the corresponding complex eigenvector. So it's going to have complex numbers in the eigenvector itself. Then, if we take the real part of that eigenvector, so the parts that only have the real numbers, not the imaginary part, that's the k vector. That's going to be our first eigenvector that we use in our solution. And then w is going to be the imaginary part of that complex eigenvector. That's going to be the second eigenvector that we're going to call in our solution. So the general solution, if these are given, lambda is alpha plus or minus i beta, and k is the real part of the complex eigenvector and w is going to be just the pure imaginary part of the complex eigenvector, then the general solution, the vector x of t, is going to be c1 e to the alpha t cosine beta t times the first, what we're calling eigenvector k, minus sine beta t times the second eigenvector, which we're calling w, plus c2 e to the alpha t cosine beta t times w plus sine beta t times k. So that's the general solution if we have a complex eigenvalues. All right, so the system of differential equations we got here is going to be dx dt equals x plus y dy dt equals negative 5x minus y. All right, and then the general solution is found by starting off with a minus lambda i determinant equals 0. So what is a? a is just the coefficient matrix over here, 1, 1, negative 5, negative 1. And then lambda i is just lambda times the identity matrix, which is lambda, 0, 0, lambda. All right, so those are our two matrices. We want to take the determinant of a minus lambda i. So a minus lambda i is going to be 1 minus lambda, 1, negative 5, and then negative 1 minus lambda. Take the determinant, set it equal to 0. That's going to give us 1 minus lambda times negative 1 minus lambda plus 5 equals 0. Now, just multiply that out. We're going to get negative 1 plus minus, oh, minus lambda to foil this thing out, minus lambda plus lambda plus lambda squared plus 5 equals 0. So we get some cancellations here. Lambda cancels with uh, minus lambda. And then negative 1 plus 5 is 4. So this is going to be lambda squared plus 4 equals 0. So that's nice. This is going to tell us that lambda squared equals negative 4. So lambda is going to equal 0 plus or minus 2i. So alpha equals 0. Alpha equals 0. Beta equals 2. So we're going to keep that in mind whenever we go to our general solution at the end, but now we got to find the corresponding eigenvector. So we're just going to find one eigenvector first and then take the real and imaginary part to get the pure, purely real eigenvectors for our general solution. All right, so to find the eigenvector, we start off with lambda equals 2i. You can pick minus 2i, but this one's going to be a little bit easier. We'll, we'll just pick lambda equals 2i. It doesn't matter which one you use to get your um, complex eigenvector v because they're just going to be off by a negative sign. But we'll use lambda equals 2i and solve the system a minus 2i times the identity times the vector v equals the zero vector. So we want to solve this system of equations using lambda equals 2i. Alright, so that's going to be 1 minus 2i, 1 negative 5, and then negative 1 minus 2i times the vector v, v1, v2 we'll call it, equals the 0 vector. All right, so how do we get the components here? We'll just use the first equation. The second equation is actually the same as the first equation, but we have to do a lot of um, complex algebra to get this equation to look like this equation up here. So we'll just work with the first equation because it's a little bit simpler. So the first equation tells us that 
1 minus 2i times v1 plus v2 equals 0. So we'll just say that v2 is equal to 1 minus 2i times v1. Actually, stick a negative sign in front there. So really, we could say that this is v2 equals 2i minus 1 times v1. So if we have a free variable again, so free v1, so let v1 equal 1, then v2 can be or will be 2i minus 1. So our eigenvector v, so we get our eigenvector v is equal to, well we've let v1 equal 1, well then v2 can be 2i or will be 2i minus 1. And now here's where it's important to break it out into its real and imaginary part. I write this as the real part, which is 1 negative 1, plus i times the imaginary part. Well, there's no imaginary part here, so we put a 0. And here the imaginary part is 2. So this is where we get our w and our k vector. So this is going to be the k vector. And this is going to be the w vector that we use in our general solution. So then x of t, we said, is going to equal c1 e to the alpha, well alpha is 0, so we'll put 0t, times cosine beta, well that's 2t, times k, well that was 1, negative 1. All right, it's minus sine of beta, so sine of 2t, times the second eigenvector, which we said was going to be 0, 2. And I'll just go down to the line here. We'll say plus c2 e to the 0t. And then pretty much the same thing, but switch the eigenvectors around and change this to a plus sign. So cosine 2t times the second eigenvector, 0, 2, plus sine 2t times the first eigenvector, 1, negative 1. All right, so that is our general solution. Simplify just a little bit, I guess, if we want to. Um, we can write this as c1 times cosine 2t times the vector 1, negative 1, minus sine 2t times the vector 0, 2, plus c2 times cosine 2t times a vector 0, 2, plus sine 2t times a vector 1, negative 1. And then we can pull out the component forms of these if we want to. All right, if we wanted to pull out the component forms, we would take the first component of each vector. So that would be like c1 times cosine 2t minus c2 or minus c1 sine 2t times 0. So actually, we didn't, wouldn't even include this term. And the same thing here, we wouldn't include this cosine term. We would just add c2 sine 2t. So, so this would be the first component of our solution. The second component would be similar, just pulling out the second component from each vector. So that's how we do complex eigenvectors.